How do I stay in the present moment when it feels unbearable? Because in Plum Village, we, uh, we always say that let us not uh, get caught in the past and the future. Let us uh, go back to the present moment. And this is a question about that. How can I stay in the present moment when the present moment feels unbearable? That's a good question. <laughs> Anyone who knows uh, the practice of mindfulness knows that uh, we have to go home to the present moment. When you go home to the present moment, you can find two kinds of situations. The first kind of situation is uh, there are so many conditions of happiness available in the here and the now. When you breathe in and bring your mind home to your body, you are established in the present moment. And you notice there are so many uh, refreshing and healing elements available in the present moment. There are so, so many conditions of happiness available in the present moment. And with that awareness to generate a feeling of joy and happiness is very easy. That, uh, that you can do in order to nourish yourself, to nourish yourself with joy and happiness. So that is the first, uh, um, first thing you encounter when you go uh, back to the present moment. The second uh, situation is that when you go back to the present moment, you might encounter a feeling of pain, a feeling of uh, a painful emotion that is in you. <coughs> in fact, uh, a painful feeling, a painful emotion um, manifests from time to time. But uh, when it begins to uh, manifest, uh, we don't like to be there, so we try to run away. Uh, pretending that it is not there. So no one is there in order to take care of the painful feeling, the painful emotion. So going back to the present moment here is no longer to, to, to recognize uh, the elements of joy and happiness, but to have a chance to take care of the pain in ourselves and to transform it. So even if the moment, the present moment is unbearable, to go back to that moment is the only chance for us to do something in order to calm it down and to uh, transform it. Most of people don't do that because they are afraid that uh, when they come home to themselves and touch the pain inside, they will be overwhelmed by the suffering. And that is why their practice is to run away. Uh, imagine something about the future to forget. Uh, go back to the past to forget. But uh, the past and the future, they are like uh, images, not reality. Only uh, the present moment is uh, real. Uh, many people try to uh, cover up the pain inside. Mm. Not only by going back to the past or run, running to the future, imagine, to imagine that there will be some uh, some hope, some uh, end of suffering in the future, but that will cannot last long. And uh, most people try to 
to cover up the suffering inside by the practice of consumption. We uh, read magazines, we watch television, we try, we find something to eat, we listen to the music, we pick up the phone to talk, everything we do, uh, we do because uh, uh, we hope that by doing these things we, we don't have to confront the suffering in us. And we allow that pain to continue to grow in us. So the practice of mindfulness um, help us to go home to the present moment. Even the moment is uh, not pleasant, but it is in that very moment that we can understand the suffering and that we can find a way in order to calm it down and to transform it. So uh, next time when you find the present moment uh, not pleasant, don't think that uh, running away from it uh, uh, is the best way. No, it may be a chance. So stay in that moment, look deeply into uh, the nature of your suffering. If you know how to practice mindful breathing or mindful walking, generating the energy of mindfulness, and then that energy of mindfulness generated by the practice help you to be strong enough to recognize, encounter the pain, and embrace it tenderly. And embracing your pain tenderly, uh, in a few minutes, you can calm it down. And um, if uh, there are other practitioners practicing with you, and then you can profit from the energy of mindfulness and compassion, getting in touch with the suffering, Bring about, bring, bring about uh, understanding of suffering and um, the energy of compassion. Understanding and compassion have the power to heal, to heal you and to heal the people who happen to be around you at that time. And if there is a group of people practicing together, embracing the suffering with tenderness, they will experience that collective energy of uh, compassion that heal, heal them. And when they suffer less, they, can, they are in a situation to help other people to do the same. There is a Bodhisattva whose name is Shitigatma. The vow of uh, Shitigatma is to go to the places where there's a lot of suffering in, a, in order to have a chance to serve, to help. And there are many uh, doctors, nurses, social workers, they are doing the same. They volunteer, they volunteer to go to painful spots of our earth, of uh, Mother Earth, in order to help the people. So Bodhisattva, Shittigatma, they are real, they are not just uh, <laughs> images. Many young people are serving as uh, Bodhisattva Shittigatma. They are not afraid of suffering because they know that they can bring relief. And uh, Bodhisattva Shittigatma has uh, a strong, powerful source of energy that is the aspiration, the third kind of nutriment, volition, you know you are there, alive. 
and you want to do something with your life. You want your life to be useful, meaningful. So you make a strong vow to go to help people who suffer. So you are not afraid of going to the so it's situation of, uh, of suffering. And these uh, bodhisattvas, they should be supported by us. We want to support them so that they will not lose their aspiration after a few years of service. We have to send them our, uh, our energy of uh, encouragement, encouragement. Mm. Uh, they need uh, nourishment and healing. So after six months, one year working in very difficult situation, they go home uh, and they have us taking care of them, trying to help them to heal so that they will go out again uh, the second time and the third time. Bodhisattva Shitikarva need help also. So we are there to help uh, young Shitikarva to continue their work in the, in, in the world. So if you have compassion, you don't mind being in a difficult, suffering situation. And if you have enough compassion, and then you are protected, you are, will not be overwhelmed by uh, the collective energy of suffering emitted by the people around. And uh, Bodhisattva Siddhikarma knows that, they, that he needs uh, a Sangha. <laughs> Sangha, in order to, to continue for a long time. So um, the practice uh, should not only be individual, the practice should be collective also. So try, let us try to convince uh, people in our family to join the practice. And the best way to do it is uh, to become uh, more and more pleasant every day, more smiling, more sweet, sweeter. And then uh, they will believe that uh, the practice will help, will, will work for them also. So when your family, your community um, uh, enjoy more harmony, uh, health, uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, and then uh, your aspiration can be more easily uh, uh, realized. Uh, without, uh, without a Sangha, without a group of people, uh, our dream cannot come true. So not only we try as a person, but we know that uh, operating as a group of people, as a Sangha, is always much better. <laughs> 